Okay, well, now that we uh, know where we're all coming from, uh, let's jump into looking at these four pillars of the, the catechism and get an idea of how we can teach these more effectively during the year of faith. And one of the first things that um, uh, I'd like to bring about to your attention as we talk about the creed is that we as catechists are really trying to help those that we teach to deepen their understanding of the beliefs that we hold most dear. And I emphasize the word hold. You know, we just finished witnessing the Summer Olympics in London, and I'm sure that you can recall um, the strength with which the gymnasts hold on to whatever apparatus they're using as part of their performance. And they hold on for dear life knowing that one small slip can cost them in their quest for a gold medal. Well, you know, in the same way, we need to hold on tightly to our Catholic beliefs because in doing so, we hold on tightly to our God who holds us up and prevents us from falling. Now, one of the first things that you can do that I recommend you do during this year of faith is to commit yourself to deepening your own understanding of the Catholic faith through your own ongoing formation. I encourage you to think of ongoing formation and not as a burden, not as a task, but rather as opportunities to grow closer uh, to the mind and heart of Jesus Christ. And during the year of faith, it's a great time to read uh, books like my very own A Well-Built Faith. And you may also be interested in a, another handy little title that Loyola Press has called A Handbook for Catholics, uh, both of these av available from Loyola Press. But don't stop there. Take advantage of all of the opportunities that are offered by your parish, your diocese, as well as quality online resources and formation opportunities that are, that are recommended by your catechetical leader and your diocese. But whatever you do, don't stop learning about your own faith. It's one of the greatest things you can do during the year of faith is to strengthen your own. Now, this year of faith is a great opportunity for all of us catechists to recommit ourselves to thorough and inspired planning and preparation for our lessons. You know, I can't say enough about how important planning is as a catechist. Each time that we prepare a lesson, we are entering into another opportunity to reignite our own faith and to deepen our own understanding of the God who calls us to draw nearer to him. So I encourage you to use your catechist guide and online resources that are provided by your textbooks publisher to plan and create engaging lessons for those that you teach. And in particular, I encourage you to take a close look at the focus or the theme of your lesson. You know, this is the, the big idea of your lesson. It's the overriding goal. And it's the one thing that you want those you teach to be able to repeat at the end of that class when someone asks them, so what did you learn tonight? The bottom line is that when you're planning a lesson, you need to be able to summarize in one sentence what the goal of your lesson is. If you can't do that, then your lesson will be running the risk of being too vague or too complicated. And one of the most important or most powerful things that we can do and really must learn to do during this year of faith is to present the Catholic faith in such a way that it clearly connects with everyday living. You know, our faith is not something separate from daily life not something that we keep in a compartment until Sunday. It's something that we live each and every day. And in our lessons, we need to latch on to that big idea that I was talking about, that session theme, and then find a way to make sure that it connects with everyday living. Uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola used the phrase, when you're teaching, enter through their door, but be sure to leave through your door. And he used that to describe this strategy. In other words, he's saying that you know where you want to go. That's your door, your big idea. But you get there by entering through their door. 
which means you enter through the lived experience of those you teach. And let's take a look at some examples to illustrate this technique so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, as I was creating this slide, I grabbed three catechist guides from the Finding God program, first grade, third grade, and sixth grade. And I opened each one of those up randomly to a lesson. And the first thing I did was I identified the session theme, the big idea. And then just off the top of my head, I tried to identify some real life experiences that connect with these themes. So for example, you see in the grade one book, I opened up to a lesson that was talking about celebrating Jesus in the Eucharist. That was the big idea. Well, if I were teaching that lesson, I would begin by focusing on special meals that the children have shared with family and friends. See, that's entering through their door. My door is where we're going to talk about celebrating Jesus in the Eucharist. In the grade three book, I opened up to a page that said my theme for that lesson would be Jesus dies and rises. And so after thinking about that for a little while, I thought, you know, a nice easy connection for third graders to understand would be talking about a plant or flowers that die in the fall and then come to life in the spring. And then grade six, I opened up to a lesson that said the prophets challenge the people. And I thought, well, sixth graders, now they're at that age where they're getting involved in lots of sports activities. And I thought a good connection, a good life connection would be to talk about a coach who tells you what you're doing wrong and seeks to help you grow and become better at what you're doing. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of locating that big idea of your lesson, making a life connection. During the year of faith, we have got to make sure more than ever that the faith that we're teaching connects with the everyday life of those that we are teaching.